Good afternoon YouTube, this is Cross, and today we are going to be starting a brand new series that I am entitling Game Asset Creation. Uh, this is going to be a beginner tutorial series for anybody who's been wanting to break into video game design, uh, specifically in the world of 3D modeling. Uh, it's going to be more tailored towards like a low poly kind of art style, nothing uh, too hyper realistic. Uh, because like I said, this is just basics, just something to get people started. And uh, today, this is what we're going to be creating. Just a couple of real simple, low poly crates. And uh, you know, we're just doing basic colors like this. Maybe in a, a future video, I'll do something like um, uh, texture, hand texturing these to, to make it look more like wood and uh, doing some sculpting to give it like some wear and tear. Uh, but yeah, so this is what we're going to be working on today. And what we're going to be focusing on is good topology. Uh, you know, making sure we don't have any N-Gons and just sticking to tries and polys, which uh, I'll explain more once we get in there. So thank you so much for joining me for the series, and I'm going to turn off my camera here so that you can see the screen. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the screencast keys add-on installed yet for the new Blender 2.8, uh, so I'm just going to have to verbally tell you what I'm clicking and what, uh, what hotkeys I'm using, but hopefully I'll have that up by the time I do the next video. So let's, yep, okay, fantastic, okay, let's get started. So uh, yeah, what we're going to be doing, opening up a new project, and good news, we're not going to be deleting the cube and then restarting with the cube, because we're not dumb. So yeah, one view, here we go. Oh, uh, yeah, by the way, I have my M-pad, uh, M-pad, my numpad emulated. Uh, so that I have uh, the Razer mouse, the Naga Chroma, so I have all the buttons on the side of my mouse. Makes it real simple to just switch between views and everything like that while it's on the mouse. Uh, if you want to have your numpad emulated, you just go to Edit, Preferences, Input, and check right here, Emulate Numpad. And then uh, that way you can just hit the numbers on top of your keyboard or if you have an actual... Uh, numpad like on a larger keyboard you can just hit that and then bring up these different views uh, so let's get started uh, we want to do hit tab to go into edit mode and we're gonna start by creating two loop cuts uh, with control R so that'll bring that up and then you just left click to select that you want to right click to keep them where they are uh, so again control R so we have one loop cut use the scroll oops, yeah, there we go. Use the scroll wheel to get to two, or however many you need, but we're just going to start with two. Left click, and then you can move them around, and we just want to right click them to keep them where they're at. And then we also want to do the same thing across the middle. Okay, good. So now we should have a Rubik's Cube. Nine by nine by nine by nine, basically just nine on every side. Okay, now what we want to do is go into edge select mode up here, uh, hold down alt, and then click on this edge and you'll see that the entire edge is now highlighted. And what you want to do is you want to double tap G because that will put you in edge slide mode. If you were just to tap G, you could just move this all over the place and then, you know, if this happens, just right click and it'll go back to the way it is. Uh, but when you double tap G, it lets you slide the edges and you can't actually move the geometry. So this is what we want. We want to bring it to the side and to me, point five looks about good so if you'll see up here in the top left corner just watch that as I slide it back and forth you see that the numbers change so I want to bring it to it's actually negative 0.5 in our case on this side so I type in I said I type in okay that's not working so let's try it again double tap G negative Y okay there we go negative point What the? F Bear with me. Let's try this edge a little bit. Double tap G. Okay, yeah, 0. 0.5. There we go. We shall try it again, senor. Double tap G. Negative 0. 0.5. There we go. Okay, beautiful. I'm glad that it worked out that time, otherwise this was about to get real embarrassing. Alright, and you want to do that for the same, uh, you want to do that for all the edge loops until you have large squares in the middle of each side. Let's double tap G, and we're going negative 0.5 again. 
Alt left click, double tap G, bring it down, type in 0.5, and this is what we want every side to look like. So I'm just going to quickly handle that. Okay, good. So now every side has uh, the large square in the middle. And that is exactly what we want. Okay, so what we, what we want to do now is we want to create two more edge loops and essentially do the same thing for each side. Control R, left click, right click. And so just so we don't get confused here, we'll, uh, we'll handle these one at a time. Uh, so Alt left click, double G to edge slide, and then we want to bring this to, actually, you know what, 0.5 looks good again. Alt left click, double tap G, and negative 0.5. Okay, same thing for over here, control R. Alright, it started with one, use the scroll wheel to get to two, left click, right click. Alt left click just to select that one edge loop, double tap G, type in 0.5, alt left click, double tap G, negative 0.5. I think you get the idea now. Uh, okay, so that side's all taken care of. Yeah, okay, so every every side is taken care of and we are good to go there. So now what we want to do is Oh wait, nope, we forgot them across the middle. Okay, so we gotta do them across the middle as well. Left click, right click. Oh, nope, wrong edge. Alt left click, there we go, double tap G. Negative 0.5. And 0.5. Okay, so now I think we're good to go. Yes. Alright, beautiful. So now what we want to do is we want to go into uh, now let's keep it in edge select mode and you want to hit C to bring up the circle select and click on the four points just to select all of the edges within the big square and then uh, if you're in circle select still you'll notice that if you try rotating uh, the view with the by clicking the middle mouse button how you normally rotate it it actually just deselects everything so what you want to do is you want to get everything selected and then right click to confirm the selection, then rotate your mesh, go back into circle select with C, uh, left click to select those edges as well, right click to confirm, and just do that all the way around. Alright, yeah, I still gotta get these two sides. And you'll notice that if you if you use your scroll wheel up and down, you can increase or decrease the uh, sphere of influence with uh, clicking. All right. So once we have once we have all of those selected, we want to hit X on our keyboard and go to dissolve edges, and that will bring us just one big square face like we had earlier. Except now we have these lines here as well, and these are going to be important. Uh, okay. Then what we want to do is go into face select mode. I want to select all of these faces. All six sides. And we're going to be extruding these into the cube. Uh, but what we have to do before that is we have to click up here. And right now it's set to median point. We want it to be individual origins. Then you hit E to extrude. And you'll notice that it starts to go into the cube. You can do it out and you get kind of like this weird pillar looking thing, but we want to do it in. And negative 0.1 looks about right. So I'm going to type that in. And there. Now we have what looks like what would be plywood and then the actual planks surrounding the, uh, the or, or covering the edges of our crate. And now what we want to do after we've done that is hit X, bring this menu up again, but instead of dissolving, we want to actually delete those faces because essentially all we needed here was this little lip of space. Uh, okay, so 
Next step, we want to put an edge loop on every single side in this little lip of space that we just created. So control R, line it up just like that. Left click, right click. Because all we need is that little uh, loop cut and we want to do that for every side. Make sure to get the bottom and the top here too. Okay, now that we have every single side with an edge loop on that little lip of space, it's time to actually start filling in the geometry with new faces um, and doing so in a way that's going to keep us in line with uh, correct uh, modeling um, topology as well as getting the little cross section in the crate that we had. And how we do that is actually fairly simple. It does not matter which uh, corner you start with. Uh, but basically when you're creating the cross section this is how you want to do it you select we're still in edge select you select two middle edges and then hit F to create a face then you do the same thing in the opposing corner All right. then you select the ending edges hit F that'll make uh, the long cross section and then one thing you'll notice is that we have like, like if we just put a let's hit alt and select this edge right here so that that whole box is selected and if we were to hit F to bring up a face right it looks good here but then we have this gap of space which is not very realistic so we need to fill that in as well what I'm going to do first is undo that and how we fix that is you select this little edge then the edge of that long piece then that little edge and same thing on this side. Nope, wrong edge. There we go. Same thing on this side. And F. Okay. Now you'll notice that everything up until right here has been a square. Those are called uh, polys or polygons. Uh, just, you know, faces of geometry with four sides. These are called tries. Uh, most game engines can read tries and polygons equally. The reason being is that if you take a polygon and you triangulate it, it actually becomes two tries. So that's why those are both um, easily readable. Everything that you make needs to be modeled with that in mind. You don't want to have what's called n-gons. N-gons are like if we took this entire, oop, go back to edge select. If we took this entire edge right here, and made a face out of that, yeah, that looks good. It looks like everything is filled in, but if we do, if we go to vertex mode and look at how many vertices are actually attached to this face of geometry, it's too many. We have one here in the corner, two, three, four, five. None of your faces should have more than four points um, because then it becomes what's called an n-gon and it wreaks havoc with textures and the way the UVs line up and everything like that. It just creates a big problem. Uh, that is more advanced stuff, but for the time being, just remember that everything that you create needs to be either a try or a poly. Uh, so let's undo that face. And now we're just going to deselect those edges. So we're still in edge mode. What we want to do is just deselect these two, create a face, and now we see that we have a nice polygon. One, two, three, four sides. And that is exactly what we want. And then we'll select these ones, create a try, fill that in there. And so now we see that we get the same effect, except now we don't have any n-gons, we have a tri, we have a poly, and everything looks good. And we want to do the same thing on the underside here. Okay, and that is one side done. Uh, and you'll notice on the inside, there's it looks like this is kind of just sticking out, that's okay. Nobody's ever going to see inside the box, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, alternatively, something that you want to keep in mind is the way that your normals are facing. So what that means is, um, let's get out of uh, edit mode real quick. If you were to create a plane, I'm just going to move the, you don't, you don't need to follow along with anything like this, but uh, if you were to create a plane, right, and you, you bring this plane into the game engine, if you're looking at it from the side that the normal is facing, which would be this side, you would see the plane, okay? 
if you were looking at it from this side here in blender we could still see it but if you were to import this into a game engine and you were looking at it from the wrong side this is what you would see you like you, you wouldn't see anything so if you looked back at the correct side you'd see the plane if you were looking at it from the wrong side you'd see nothing okay and the reason for this is the the direction that the normals are facing there's a really awesome way to make sure um, that all of your normals are facing the right direction and what you want to do in order to see that is you come in between the hand and the movie camera and you click this little drop down and go into face orientation if it's blue you're good if it's red it means you're facing the wrong direction so from down here we wouldn't see this up top we would see this you'll also probably notice that the inside of the cube is all red that's totally fine because as long as the outside of the cube which is all anybody's gonna see is blue then we are good to go uh, so don't worry about the inside that's not important I'm just gonna quickly delete that and then we can turn off face orientation and go back into edit mode okay so what I'm going to do real quickly is just um, model out the rest of these sides and then uh, I will be back here with you guys in a bit okay guys uh, welcome back so what I did instead of modeling out the entire thing is I just pulled up the one that I created before uh, so you know we have our finished product here and as you can see everything looks good we got the whole thing uh, all modeled and everything like that so then uh, essentially all you want to do is go into edit mode and now we're going to start assigning some materials because if we look at the rendered view right now which you can do either by clicking on this button here or by tapping Z and then using this little wheel to pick whichever one you want if we go in there you know and we're looking at um, object mode instead of edit mode you know we just got the basic color uh, and if we click the solid you know like nothing really happens there first of all let me make sure that uh, yeah okay this whole thing was okay so what we want to do is this we're going to go into edit mode and we want to select the parts that are going to be a different color and what we want to do is over here we have your little like like this is where you can get the modifiers this is camera settings render settings and all that kind of stuff um, the world settings you know that kind of thing particles and, and all that good stuff what we want is this one uh, and if you hover it over to hover over it it says material what we want to do is we want to create two new materials okay and it doesn't really matter what you name them you can name them if you want just make sure you know which one's different you want to change the color so this is going to be a nice dark kind of brown and this one's going to be like a lighter kind of yellow style of uh, plywood color and what you want to do is go into face mode and you want to select all the faces that you want to be that um, specific color Oops. and you want to click on that one and hit assign so now if we go into rendered mode you'll see and because I had already done this it, it kind of set it up this way uh, well actually that's not true at all so you'll see that over here it's still this dark brown that's because that's the main material that we have selected uh, we have to actually assign these faces of geometry this new color uh, but anyway so if we come out of uh, edit mode you'll now see that we have that the rest of these need to be changed so I will go ahead and do that real quick okay I think I got every side so now if we hop out of uh, edit mode you will now see that we have our finished crate and then if you wanted to you could uh, you know shift D to duplicate these and kind of drag them around and then uh, you know let's bring one up here and then move that over like that like how I had it before and uh, how I'm doing that by the way is, is if you duplicate something like let's say I want to duplicate this one uh, you know shift D to duplicate and then if you don't want it just kind of flying all over the place you can ta uh, tap on the letter corresponding to the axis axis I'm sorry not access axis so if I only wanted to move it on the X axis you would just tap X and then it only moves that way and then so I wanted to move it out a little bit like that 
And then if you tap G, that allows you to move it again. And this time I only want to move it on the Y axis. So we'll bring it forward a little bit like that. And then I'm going to tap R to rotate it and rotate that on the Z axis. And then we're going to face it that way a little bit. Kind of like in what we had when I first started the video. Uh, so yeah, guys, that's how you uh, model low poly uh, crates. You, you could also do like a, an X cross section in the crates or you could just like, like not have that at all. Uh, and that would be totally fine as well. In fact, on this one, I actually left um, a couple sides without the correct geometry. You'll notice there are no tries here. I left a couple of those sides like that so that we could actually, oops, so that we could actually delete those faces and you could see what that looked like as well. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so this, this is what we normally have, right? And then, uh, you know, if you wanted it to be without the cross section, it would look kind of like that. And again, real simplistic, real just like not detailed at all. Just this is for like if you're running an old school RuneScape level graphics game or just something real simple, real low poly. Um, but like I said, all of this could be improved and I, I might do that in a later video. Like we could texture paint all this, uh, like I was saying, uh, sculpt a little bit these edges, give it like some wear and tear, uh, maybe a couple chunks missing out of it or something like that. And there's, you know, we could hand paint in actual planks so that this just didn't look like one solid piece of plywood. There's a lot of stuff that you could do to make this look more realistic, but this is just the basic. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about anything that uh, we covered, feel free to uh, drop them in the comment section. Otherwise, if you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a down like so that I can know if I need to improve or anything like that. Uh, and thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace out.